Hi, my name is Carol. Welcome to Hummingbird Spot. This video is the first in the series that covers my second trip to Peru, looking for new and exciting, beautiful hummingbirds to photograph. If you haven't seen my previous trip videos, you can click right there. I flew to Lima and met up with William Oriana from Beaks and Peaks, where we flew to Tarapoto and met up with Steve Sanchez. Then we headed back out to the Wembo Reserve. This was three months after our last trip there, but now it was mating season, and I was really hoping to get to see the marvelous spatula tail hummingbird in breeding mode and displaying to the females. On our way to Wembo, we stopped again at Fundo Alto Nieva. The royal sun angel is an endangered species found in a very small area in northern Peru and southwestern Ecuador. It's not an easy bird to find, but I had read that a few of them had been visiting the feeders here at Fundo Alto Nieva. So we came here three months earlier and we didn't see the bird, but this time we had some success. I was thrilled to see this one. Now, there are a lot of hummingbirds that have a lot of blue in them, like the violet saber wing that we saw in Honduras, but the royal sun angel is the only completely blue one. The white-tailed hill star is another species that was here at Fundo Alto Nieva that we hadn't seen the last time we were here. This little guy is found in Ecuador, Colombia, and in Peru. This little bird perched on a really low branch for quite a while, and that made him fairly easy to photograph. Well, now that I filmed the Royal Sun Angel, we were off to the Wembo Reserve. Wembo is like Mecca to me. <laughs> I don't know what it is about the marvelous spatula tail hummingbird, but I feel this weird connection to it. If it's true that people have spirit animals or totems, that bird is definitely mine. The last time we were here at Wembo, just three months earlier, I got to film two male marvelous spatula tail hummingbirds. One of them was a male in complete feather, and the other one had molted and he was just growing his feathers in and his long tail feathers were not quite the length they would be when they were all grown out. We were greeted at the gate by Santos Montenegro. He's the coordinator for this reserve and uh, he probably knows more about the marvelous spatula tail than anyone else on earth. We were photographing a lot of these birds at the feeders and they were coming in droves. This time there were lots of full plumaged males to photograph and there were a lot of juveniles also. The marvelous spatula tail is tiny. One hovered just a couple feet in front of my face, and I swear if I hadn't known what it was, even with its long tail, I would have thought it was some kind of insect. I managed to get a few pictures of the spatula tail on one of the feeders with a bronzy Inca. The bronzy Inca is an average sized hummingbird, so looking at the two of them on the feeder, you can really appreciate the size difference. A purple-throated sun angel also made a few appearances at the feeders here, and he liked to perch in the open on a branch near his favorite feeder. There's a decent population of this bird, but the only place you can see it is in southern Ecuador and northwestern Peru. The next morning, we got up really early because we wanted to make the hike up to the lek. A lek is a congregation of males. It's an area where the males come to display for the females. Sort of reminds me of the red light district in Amsterdam, but instead of the females being in the windows, it's the males. They stake out a little piece of territory, like a branch or something like that, and they wave their tails frantically over the tops of their heads. And when they attract somebody's attention, they leave the branch and go into this elaborate dance. They look up so they display their gorget, 
um, they make a clicking sound with their beaks. It's sort of, when you approach the light, you can hear that clicking. It sort of sounds like a little branch snapping over and over. And they have to show the female how well they can fly. I took a little video just so you can get an idea of what it looks like in there. It's very hard to film because first of all, you're in the cloud forest and it's dark. Any sunlight that can manage to get through is, has to filter through tall trees and all kinds of sticks and ferns and dead branches. And that's just what the spatula tail likes. I couldn't even get a clear shot of William and he was sitting right next to me. I figured I might as well bring this one out to say hello, since you've been hearing him in the background of some of these videos. Sometimes, no matter where he is in the house, I can hear him, because if he hears me talking, he wants to chime in. How are you doing today, Fillmore? Love you. One thing I noticed, very often when you saw a male display, he wasn't displaying to a female, but to a juvenile male as if they were having spatula tail school and he was teaching the juvenile how the dance is done. Then you would look over onto another area of the lek and you would see a bunch of juveniles facing each other trying to practice the clicking and putting their heads up in the air. They didn't have the long tail feathers, they have these little short stubby feathers, but you could see that they were spreading those feathers apart. I wondered if the adult males were doing this for their own offspring or if this was a general thing they did to teach all the young males how to dance. I spent hours and hours photographing these gorgeous birds and I knew then that I would be back many times just to stay here and hang out with them. After we climbed down from the lek, we found a couple little wood stars feeding on the flowers right outside the lodge. There's a lot of flowers planted at Wembo, and both male and female little wood stars sample the flowers right outside your doors. Well, it was time to leave Wembo. We spent three days and I did see what I wanted to see. But I have to admit, I had a tear in my eye on the last climb down from the lek. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell because next week we're going to fly south to Cusco and then drive on to Ollantaytambo where I saw the giant hummingbird for the first time and also a Peruvian endemic, the bearded mountaineer. See you next Sunday.